So I've owned the Xbox One over here for almost eight months. I got it pretty much on the launch date. And I do have to say currently right now, nothing has really impressed me in terms of its graphical performance. In terms of next gen features, there are a lot of potential stuff that could be interesting in the future. But currently most games run at 720p with a higher frame rate of 60 frames per second. Uh, a lot of games such as your uh, Call of Duty and uh, Titanfall run at that smooth frame rate, but the clarity is certainly not there. And games that are more graphically impressive, such as Forza, have still a lot of aliasing and a lot of ugliness that you shouldn't expect when paying almost $500 for any kind of gaming machine. Now the PS4 on the other hand certainly has better graphical performances in terms of rendering titles at full 1080p, but then you come across a more lackluster frame rate that hovers around 40 frames per second on more demanding titles such as Battlefield 4. Now this gave me an idea to do my own ultimate cheap PC challenge where I basically make a computer that can outperform or match the console's performance while having all the versatilities of being a full computer at a, a price that's actually under the consoles. Now, a lot of people have made their own cheap uh, PC gaming challenges, but uh, what I want to do different is put my own unique twist on it by just getting the bare essential components that you need and spending most of your money on a great graphics card that will give you not only an excellent experience in terms of gaming, but also meet most of your simple day-to-day -day computing needs. So without any further ado, let's get right into this video and see what parts you need to make your own console killer PC. Now the first thing that we're going to talk about is of course parts. Now obviously we can't go out and uh, go get a Xeon 8 core processor with a GTX 780 Ti or anything like that. Since we're on a uh, tight budget, we're going to be strictly focusing on the main thing that counts which is a solid uh, graphics card with uh, adequate uh, motherboard support and uh, a good processor that will get you up and running. Now before we get started on the exact parts that I use, make sure to check out the description down below where you'll see uh, the specific parts that I've used and the Amazon links towards them so you can check out the specifications in detail to see if those parts are right for you but if you're basically building the exact same PC you'll get pretty much the exact same results that we're going to be taking a look at at the uh, later half of this video. So definitely check out the description. Also check out my instafuse.com article where you'll find uh, different builds for different levels of budget. So if you want a more higher demanding PC for uh, better performance in terms of gaming or if you're going to do some video editing or application specific tasks. So if you're interested in building your dream machine, definitely check that out. Now first we're going to start with the processor that I've selected for our cheap PC. And here I'm going to be using the AMD 2650 Cabini dual core processor. Now this is clocked a little bit lower than uh, most of your AMD processors and you can see that it's pretty much at the lowest tier of what you can get for pretty much any uh, AMD processor. Obviously you can go with Intel but you're going to come across a, a little bit of a higher price range and here we definitely want to prioritize on uh, where our money is going to go to and I'm really going to want to spend the most possible on our graphics card so this APU is perfect. Now obviously you can get the newer Kaveri APUs which are certainly a lot more powerful in terms of their uh, dedicated internal integrated graphics performance but for us we really want to get a essential APU or processor that will do most of our day-to-day -day tasks in terms of our computing needs uh, but really make room for the graphics card in terms of its funding because in a gaming PC the graphics card is uh, certainly the most important thing. Now we're going to need an AM1 socket motherboard and I've selected an ASRock AM1 B motherboard. This is a really good starting point for our cheap PC. This is uh, priced extremely economically which again will help towards our uh, uh, getting as much money into our graphics card as possible. A continued theme over here as you can see and it has two slots of RAM which is great. You can put uh, pretty much full-size graphics card which is definitely Definitely a, a good thing for us and uh, even though the big uh, disadvantage on this motherboard is that this is a 16x slot but it runs at 4x now 
Based on my testing, you could definitely get a, a 16X uh, slot that runs at 16X speed, but the amount of money that you're gonna have to spend and the performance uh, difference between one that runs at 4X to one that runs at 16X based on the graphics card I've selected is really gonna be minor compared to the money that you're gonna spend. And again, lastly, this motherboard will probably do for what our needs are right now with a minimal impact in our graphical performance. Now for the RAM, I've selected one stick of four gigs of DDR3, which should be plenty for most of our day-to-day -day tasks and uh, most of our gaming needs. You can obviously upgrade uh, later down the road, but this will do fine for our budget right now. Now for our storage, I just simply picked up a 500 gig uh, regular hard drive from Seagate. It is definitely economically priced. You can obviously get more down the road and upgrade to an SSD. That's the beauty of building your own PC, but 500 gigabytes should be good for us to get started. Now for the case and power supply, I've actually recycled an old PC case of mine and uh, customized it a little bit with our logo. And uh, for the power supply, I just got a simple 400 watt power supply, which should be more than enough for our low powered gaming PC. Now, if you're building a PC from scratch and you're on a tight budget, what I would recommend is getting a case with a power supply built in. Now these are really cheap Chinese built parts and uh, you're gonna find that obviously the quality won't be up there with a higher end case or higher end power supply, but for $40, uh, taking a look at some of the cases that you can get on Amazon, uh, you really can't beat the price of getting a uh, decent ATX size case with a 480 watt power supply that will be more than enough for pretty much anything you're gonna do on the lower end gaming PC side. So I would definitely recommend that uh, based on our budget right now. Now last but not least is going to be the graphics card that I've selected. And here I've selected the R9 270. Now you can spend a little bit more and get the 270X version of this card, but from what I've experienced based on the benchmarks, I really think that the 270 has uh, the best kind of deal for the performance, great performance, uh, to price ratio and uh, once we take a look at the benchmark you'll see what I mean but here again you're free to really get any type of brand of graphics card I have the uh, Asus version over here but feel free to get a Sapphire version really whatever is priced the best they're pretty much all the same uh, PCBs and internal components they have different cooling technology and software and drivers but Overall, anyone will do. And again, feel free to get a higher end graphics card or a NVIDIA based graphics card if you're doing a lot of video editing or anything like that. A good alternative solution to the 270 is the GTX 750 Ti edition. You could also get the uh, 760 edition for $200 or, or above that. Now all in all, once we add up all the different components, we get a grand total of about $354. And uh, your pricing may fluctuate depending upon what deals there are. But if you take a look at those Amazon links, you'll definitely get a similar uh, perspective in terms of price. And we're basically under $50 uh, compared to the $399 PS4 and the $399 Xbox One without the Kinect. And uh, looking at that, it is an incredible entry price for a gaming PC. There's really no excuse now if you're into a console or into a gaming PC, you'll actually see a whole bunch of advantages with going to this route. And obviously there's a lot of great upgrade paths you can go. Now keep in mind, you still have to spend about $100 to get a uh, Windows operating system, whether it be 8.1 or Windows 7. You can obviously uh, get Linux, Ubuntu, or even SteamOS, which is a uh, no cost solution for, for the most part. And uh, that's a great uh, solution. Obviously games library on those are growing and uh, hopefully when SteamOS launches officially, you'll have a great selection of uh, excellent games for Linux based operating systems. But even on Windows, I think this is still a fantastic deal and uh, definitely one that you should try to consider. Now with all that part stuff out of the way, it took me about 25 minutes to actually put everything together. 
I've built a couple of PCs in the past, so it wasn't a big issue. And uh, definitely take your time if you're doing it for the first time. Uh, but don't be afraid. Uh, these days, PC building is really quite easy, and there's tons of guides on YouTube and on Google and the internet all over the place on how to do it. So now, since we have everything put together and I've installed my Windows operating system and everything, loaded up all my games, here is my gaming result that you've been all been waiting for. Now, firstly, all my gaming benchmarks were done at a full 1920 by 1080 on high to ultra settings on most of the games and I'll tell you specifically what settings they were for the particular game. But at this setting you'll actually find that most of your games will look way better than anything that you'll find on the Xbox One and certainly up to the level if not better than what you would find on the PS4 which renders most of its games in 1080. But we'll definitely find a lot better shadow detail, a lot better sharpness in the overall clarity and certainly higher frame rates depending upon which uh, particular graphics rendering setting you set your game at. Now the first benchmark is the very important Battlefield 4 benchmark and here we're using uh, fairly high detail settings at a 1920 by 1080 and we're getting a solid 66 frames per second. Now obviously you can bump up a lot of the shadow detail and a lot of your anti-aliasing settings to a higher detail but you're definitely going to find a, uh, a lower frame rate in terms of that. But if you stick to high uh, default settings you're going to find an excellent experience that's going to be certainly better than most of your consoles out there. Next we're going to be taking a look at the Heaven benchmark. We're going to render it at ultra settings and we get a very impressive 43 frames per second at 1920 by 1080 and that is very impressive and this is one of the reasons why I selected the R9 270 is that it has an excellent performance for the 1920 by 1080 resolution and this is certainly a demanding benchmark that can certainly tie down lower performing graphics cards but the one that we've selected certainly has no problem and even though we, if we had a little bit of a higher end graphics card and even a little bit of a better processor we could definitely get a little bit more FPS out of our PC but this is certainly not bad for the the certain budget that we've selected. Next up is Bioshock Infinite and at fairly high settings we're getting a solid 67 frames per second which is fantastic and really exceptional and uh, Metro Last Light also has a really good uh, overall FPS range. Now Metro Last Light is uh, certainly a very high demanding uh, game that requires a lot of GPU power. We're getting 38 frames per second on high settings. If you want to play this game at uh, a decent level you could turn it down to uh, medium settings and still get an amazing performance out of your 270. But Generally speaking, this game is definitely the hardest game you'll come across in the PC library right now. And our PC is certainly doing a job that is very adequate considering its budget. Now Titanfall runs with no problems whatsoever at a solid 65 frames per second at pretty much max settings. This game is very easy to run on most of your graphics cards out there and our system has certainly no problem. Very smooth and excellent performance on this and certainly way better than what you'll find on the Xbox One. Now the last game that we're going to talk about is Watch Dogs and Watch Dogs isn't really that optimized for the PC right now. They're getting updates as we speak and they're updating constantly to get more optimization for NVIDIA and AMD graphics cards. We get about 43 frames per second which is certainly not bad and uh, we're running at high details. You can certainly bring it down and if you add uh, some custom mods you can definitely run it a little bit better and a little bit more smoother. Uh, so definitely check that out if you're into Watch Dogs but we can certainly play it at a very very nice details and at full 1080p and I would definitely say that this is certainly up to the level of a PS4 if not better and the best thing about Watch Dogs is you can mod it on the PC and it pretty much looks like a whole new game which is far superior than what you would find on the PS4. Now that's really it for our benchmarks. I do have to say overall 
This PC has certainly impressed me for the amount of money that we spend, which is around $350. We've certainly matched our goals of uh, competing against the next generation consoles, and in some cases, certainly surpassing them, both in terms of resolution and frames per second. The beautiful thing about this is you can always upgrade down the road in terms of better, more, uh, higher performance parts, but as it stands, definitely impressive and uh, certainly a great option for anybody on a tight budget to get a PC that can pretty much do most of your simple day-to-day -day tasks and pretty much play all the games that you would ever want to and uh, have all that versatility and a lot of other potential down the road. If you like this video, please make sure to give us a thumbs up. Again, all the parts that we've talked about are listed in the description below, as well as my uh, custom PC build guides for uh, higher end level PC builds. So if you're interested in getting your dream PC up and running, definitely check out my instafuse.com article for that. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please make sure to leave that on a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. But again, thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Take care.